Many of my discoveries are to do with artists' use of mirrors. And as Brunelleschi used a mirror for his first experiments in perspective, I think that's a sensible place to start. Brunelleschi fortunately had a friend, Antonio Manetti, who's left us a very precise description of the painting and object that he produced in his efforts to fix the laws of perspective. Manetti says, the first work in which he showed it was a small panel, about half a braccio square, on which he made a picture of the Church of San Giovanni of Florence, that's the baptistry. And on this panel, uh, for the distance and in the parts representing the sky, where the boundaries of the painting merge with the air, Filippo placed burnished silver. Manetti tells us that Brunelleschi put burnished silver in the sky so that the clouds that were reflected in the sky would be moved by the wind. Well, I find that perfectly ridiculous, that a man who's setting out to invent a new perspective uh, should get sidetracked into clouds of wind and wind, it's much, much more likely that he started with a piece of burnished silver, and we know the size of it, it's about 14 inches square, and uh, that he, as a goldsmith, would be perfectly capable of making a beautiful, flat and polished mirror out of a piece of silver of that size, and it would have been as good a mirror as he could possibly have laid his hands on. So having got his silver mirror, he would fix it firmly in a vertical position like this. He would fix this eye, it's a, a viewer, so to speak, it's got a hole through here, uh, so that your eye is always in exactly the same position. So that the reflection of the baptistry here, he could, by holding his eye exactly in the right position all the time, he could actually press a sharp point onto the silver and make little dots for each angle. And that way, of course, the baptistry is um, octagonal and you get all these complex orthogonals, that is the horizontal directions, would all be fixed on the silver. Clearly it would be most convenient to then take it home or put it down on the table and actually scribe with a ruler uh, the uh, angles that join those points. And my guess is that in order to make that image clear to everybody, he would then have painted in the building, but not painted in the sky. And that's why Manetti thought he'd put burnished silver in the sky. In fact, it had always been there, so to speak. It was part of the mirror. That's my interpretation. And you weren't to look at the baptistry and say, oh, yes, very, very like. No, you had to, he made a little hole in the middle, and you had to put that up against your eye, and you looked at the painting in a second mirror, and you compared that image with the baptistry. Now, what was all that about? Quite clearly, the first image was reversed because it was seen in the mirror. The second mirror reverses it back so that you could compare it with the baptistry. Very straightforward, very simple explanation. Again, Minetti, Brunelleschi's friend, describes this process in the biography he wrote after Brunelleschi's death. 
Filippo had the beholder put his eye against the reverse side where the hole was large, and while he shaded his eye with his one hand, with the other he was to hold a flat mirror on the far side in such a way that the painting was reflected in it. When you look through here, of course your own reflection is covering almost a quarter of the mirror. But that's very easily got round because you've got your fixed eye point and you can simply look through that way or you can look with the other eye and have your reflection on the other side so that it's very easily got round. The top is always free but uh, the bottom, either that quarter or that quarter is covered. There was a pretty satisfactory perspective in uh, use, first used I think by Simone Martini in the Simon Martini Chapel in Assisi and then afterwards by Lorenzetti Brothers and Giotto himself used something very very similar at the end of his life. And that perspective held for nearly a hundred years. What Brunelleschi had to do was start from an image of the world that everyone would accept as being accurate. And from this image he could deduce the laws of perspective. And then uh, he tried to persuade people with this method. In fact, he had to do another perspective experiment in order to finally uh, get his message across. David Hockney has demonstrated how Brunelleschi might have used a concave mirror and thrown an image onto a piece of paper where it could equally well be traced. Uh, the thing is that Manetti's description, I think, makes it pretty clear that my interpretation is the correct one. Amusingly, Martin Kemp in his book, The Science of Art, uh, has six different possibilities for the way Brunelleschi may have done this experiment. And the one he prefers is the use of survey instruments, but he doesn't tell us how to do that. And uh, the one he likes least is the one I've just demonstrated. Of course, my explanation matches the recorded facts extremely well. Martin Kemp's preferred idea of using survey instruments is wrong because survey instruments are used from, for turning drawings into reality. What we're interested in here is turning reality into a drawing. And what was absolutely necessary was to start from an image of reality that everyone believed in. I was trained as a sculptor and I've been practicing it for 50 years. And I think it's that practical background which has allowed me to discover things that the more academically trained 